What chicken do you want to fish for, honey? <laughs> Check out these bottle trees. These are absolutely everywhere in Tambo. These are um, very similar to the Boab trees, but I think the Boab trees are native to Kimberley region. So in Queensland, they're called the bottle tree. Pretty sure they're the same family. Bottle though, trees they? grow taller. Boabs yeah. are shorter and fatter, which is why I think this looks like a boab because it's really short and it's really fat. <laughs> yeah, but no, the boabs are even fatter, aren't they? And even shorter, like me. <laughs> friend called Flo, Tambo Rural Fire Brigade. So Flo, as she's been infectionally named, hailed originally from the Dennis factory in Guildford. I'm not going to read you everything, but I'm going to read you this little bit here. As a water pump, she was notoriously unreliable and difficult to start. It's like a Ford Ranger, isn't it? <laughs> Legend has it that it took so long to start her that a fire on Albert Street was already out before she even arrived on the scene. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool. Tambo's got a lot to offer, hasn't it? I don't even know what this is, but it's, it's, a like, seat. it's like a seat with a bag rack or something on top. <laughs> bag rack. Moving through town, it's actually getting quite busy now. The tour bus has just pulled up. Chris is about to move the car. Um, we just had a look at the fire truck, as you saw. But I'm wondering how long it's actually going to take until this one realises that the pub is right there info about the Tambo's Riverly Theatre. That's where those guys um, set the rabbits loose on that video that we just saw in the museum. To be here for a reason, but I, I don't know if that used to be the theatre. It looks like a new building to me, so I'm not quite sure what the go is with that. But the old Riverly Theatre looked like that. How's this for another old school truck, eh? Do you want yeah. to see what brand it is? Yeah, can we guess? Are you ready? Chevrolet! We're seeing heaps of Chevys out here in the outback, aren't we? How good Does it is have that? it? Oh yeah, it's kind of got it sort of written on there. Yeah. Sort of. Mine's see. just a little bigger. Just a little. This is way more practical. So this was the first ever GCI Tritech tray. <laughs> so this is when they first sort of started. They've come a long way. They since, have come since, a long way, haven't since, they? Yeah. This was their first Chevy tray that they did. Pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah. Hundred percent. You could reach this one. They've done great. Yeah. And these are their um. So these are the original methods. These are the 605s, these were the originals. And the inner drive system that's under the bonnet, we can't show you that because that's a secret. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> top secret. This is the best shop in town. Mm. It's called the pub. Oh. <laughs> I asked him to stand next to this and that say... That is the grossest thing on this planet. Why would you destroy a pie with green mash on it? He doesn't like peas. I don't get it. Anyway, we're coming back here tonight for some beers, some dinner and the chicken races. We and coming? some mushy peas. No, we're not. No mushy peas. Right, we are going to Ben's be... chicken races. We're doing this. We are doing this. Kicks yeah. off from 5pm. Yeah. Tambo's just bringing it all on, aren't they? Yeah. Tambo is on. Alright, let's go get some water, get back to the van, get some shopping done, then we'll come back Get some town. water? Yeah, for the caravan to refill. Oh, refill so, the chef. Yeah. Gotcha. Go yeah, get some yeah. water. I think we'll be here for yeah, a little the while. The They're talking trucks. This is an absolute weapon, this motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hmm. so what size is that? 6.6. 6.6 Duramax. V8 diesel. Um, V8 diesel. It's about... Oh, we're going to be here all day. Yeah. This is going to take a little while, so can you cue the music? We have two tanks, we've got a 75 litre in the headboard there and that gravity feeds down to a 105 litre tank. So when it stops gurgling and sound like it's running through an empty tank, she's getting full. So just about to go through the overflows, I reckon. And you'll start hearing it dribbling out down the bottom there. So you ready for it? I think it's getting pretty close. It's really quiet now. Ooh. 
we are very, very close now. It's silent. So I think it's just about to come out of the overflows. Why am I whispering? Because <laughs> we're just trying to hear. Here we go. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here we go. Out. Where's the overflow? Stop. Out the overflow. Oh. We are full as a goog. Okay. Now you can do your washing, darling. <laughs> Yay! So we'll do this one first. I think this has got like maybe 50 or 60 litres in it already, so. Not empty, we've oh, already yeah. filled it up, Mike. Yeah, okay. We will come over here. And I've made just a little short hose so it's a lot easier. Okay, so which one are we gonna use? Any, mini, mighty, mighty. This one. Huh? Mm -hmm. So with this little fitting here, yeah. easy. Yeah. So we just put it in here, like that, and we're done. Simple. Yeah. Hang, hang on a second. Hang on. Stop before you go any further. We have had so many questions about where you can buy where these. this entire fitting is, so. and the answer is, I don't know. GCI Trade Tech. Because this is from GCI Trade Tech, so please, no one ask me again. I get it, but just if you want this fitting, you the, have to buy, uh, the whole yes. canopy comes with it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, exactly. So then we just put him in here like that. Then we'll come over here. We'll turn the pump on. There's a pump here. So we've got a mains here, or we've got the one inside as well, but that's why we're switched on, so. Where am I? And then we just turn him on, you ready? Okay. Ready? Watch. Okay. okay. In the hole. In the hole. And there we go. It's that simple to refuel our van. Refuel it. Refuel? <laughs> Rewater, refuel it with water. Yeah. How are you going? I'm going good. How are you going? I'm good. Can you show me um, the tank levels in the side marine monitoring system, please? I can. If you could do that, that'd be great. No worries. This is where we keep track of the water going in. Right up here. You can see here that the freshwater large... Oh, it's disappeared again. Um, that's the one that's being filled right now. That's actually two tanks combined. In the middle here, we have a separate designated filtered drinking water tank and then over here we have the smaller tank. I'm still filling away honey but you may now turn the washing machine on and wash my nobbies. Actually able to run the washing machine while he is still filling the tanks. The weather out here swings from freezing cold like it was really cold last night. Uh, it was really cold this morning while we were eating breakfast and now it's really um, not just warm but it's quite hot I think it's only 22 degrees but when the sun hits you it's really hot so my jeans are off my little dress is on but it's good timing because my jeans need to go into this load of washing this is the laundry detergent that I use these are the dreamly wash and dry sheets so um, goes in the washing machine also goes in the dry also works as a stain remover as you can see it doesn't take up much room in the cupboard biodegradable so within 10 days it'll biodegrade um, it's just a sheet like that, looks a bit like a baby wipe. Um, good thing about this as well is if you are really trying to conserve water, you don't actually have to put your washing machine through the rinse cycle. So that saves a whole lot of water. Does your washing machine sing too? So I like to drop mine in first. Um, water level usually high because we're doing a full load. And I let it fill for a little bit. I don't know if you have to do that. It's just something I've always done back from when I used powders. Um, but I let it run for a little bit before I pop the clothes in. Who else gets lucky when they do the washing? Haha, <laughs> two bucks. That's actually pretty good. Usually it's 50 cents. Well, hi there. Just washing your clothes in the scrubber wash bag. Reason being is that the washing machine is full and we've got just a little bit extra. So in here we've got a pair of Chris's big pants and big pants yeah. I'm only five foot to nothing well compared to my clothes I've Lucky got I'm much, six foot honey I've got two days worth of washing in there and he's got like two pairs of pants and two shirts and some socks and it's just anyway the washing machine doesn't fit at all so scrub a wash bag um, pop your clothes in you just fold it over like this I do this um, when we're in the chev as well when we don't actually have a washing machine or whether when we're trying to conserve water 
um, and then you just open the little valve here. Is that such a thing? What? Us con conserving water? Well, sometimes. I mean, there's not always places to fill up. So usually I do this in the sink, so if it spills out everywhere. There you go. And then it's actually got a built-in kind of, what do you call those things? Washboard. And I do it in here, and then you just, let me see what's going on. You just do that for anywhere between... And it's a workout for you too. Yeah, between 30 seconds and three minutes, depending on how dirty the clothes are. We may be filthy. Filthy dirty. Actually, it's kind of dusty out here, so everything makes the water turn kind brown. Kind of dusty. <laughs> yes, we are in the outback. Anyway, come back in three minutes. <laughs> okay, I'm back. You're back. Great. So, unzip it. How long was that for? Hang on. Was that three minutes? Um, sound like you cheat. That sound like about two and a half about minutes. Two. Yeah, probably about two. It has to be exact. Then you just tip it like that. And there's my pants. And there's your pants. They're all washed in. They're all washed in, yeah. Um, if you use detergent that you need to rinse out, we use stuff that you don't actually have to rinse, or if things are really dirty, you just pop them back in, fill it up with fresh water, slush it around, pour it out again. So you use way less water than a washing machine, and it's done a lot faster as well. And listen, it's a workout too. You're getting old and unfit, <laughs> woman. Yeah, that's me. Hey. I still love you though. We got a boxing session this afternoon. Are you still keen? You said no. That... I'm going to the pub. Oh, you told me and you chicken were chicken races. With me. No way. Pub, chicken races, pies, and disgusting green mash. <laughs> Not. Bye. 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 Uh, I forgot to mention when you're done washing, rinsing, and whatever the clothes, uh, pop them into the washing machine and just put them on the spin cycle so it spins all the water out so they dry much faster. That's when you if hang you have outside. an inverter. If you have an inverter, yes. If you've got if you a don't, washing you just machine. just wring it out the good old way and put it on the clothes. You can see here on the scrubber wash bag, it gives a pretty good depiction of what you do. You fill it, you roll it and clip it, deflate it, rub it for however long you need to rub it, rinse it, and then hang it out to dry. Oh my gosh. That's for neighbours, honey. Here at the pub, just waiting for the chicken racing to begin. So, what, what's your dibs for tonight, honey? Apparently, what do you the hot tip is this, this pink and white one down here. Which one? Down here. Oh, here's a hot tip, is he? Now, like what happened at the pig races, the guy who ran the races said the gold one was going to win, so I went for something completely different. So, I'm going to go for the blue one because it's the one that flew the nest and I think it's feisty. Yeah, he's and feisty. Maybe he did a run. So, blue. Oh, no. Blue. Good pink. Well, these are all our chickens. We've, we've got one missing tonight, which is um, a plain black one called... Not on the dinner plate, I hope. No, he's not, she's not on the dinner plate tonight. Her name is Beyonce. ...episode of Ben's Chicken Racing. My name's Ben. I haven't done anything yet. Yeah, don't, don't clap yet. Uh, my name's Ben. You may have noticed I am neither a chicken, nor am I in shape to be running around. <laughs> but there are eight lovely ladies, uh, seven lovely ladies in this little race course just here who are getting ready to do some chicken racing for you. What chicken do you want to bid for, honey? The blue one. The blue one? Yeah. Baku blue? Yeah. Okay, how much are we going to bid? Thousand dollars. Okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got last night's winner. Um, she is third on the winning list so far this year. She's our naughty chicken. She likes to jump out. She's all in blue. Ladies and gents, do we have an opening bid for Baku Blue? How much? Fifty dollars. Oh, I want the blue chicken. 
That's a lot of washing up and your parents don't agree. We got fifty dollars here, ladies and gentlemen, so we're gonna beat fifty dollars. We have fifty dollars. Does he listen at home? It's gotta be sixty. It's gotta be sixty. Yeah. Sixty dollars here. Oh, I know. We got sixty dollars here, ladies and gentlemen, so we're gonna beat sixty dollars. We need here seventy. We have sixty dollars over here till I hear seventy. We have sixty dollars going once, going twice. So well Thank you for your support. I hope you're happy. I'm yes, very okay. happy. <laughs> <laughs> we get to take him home for dinner too. Anyway, it's a fundraiser. Do what you want. All right, ladies and gents, we have $300 here in the middle of the raving lunatics. We have $300 going twice. Stop! <laughs> All right, here we go, ladies and gents. We are on. We are on. Like a ball one here at Ben's Chicken Racing. Oh. Go Chicken! No, here we go, here we go. I'm going to the chickens. We're on like a ball one, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the Ginger Ninja. We've got uh, chicken dinner. Beckles wanted to get involved. All right. At the moment, we have two good. <laughs> Big bits, get involved. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are on lap number two, all right. As I dodge the chickens. Here we go, here we go, I get from lap number three. We are halfway there, right as I turn the corner, who have we got? Here we go, here we go, we got chicken dinner. We got the lovely, we got a flat battery, Toby, I think we just kept running for a battery. Well, we may make it, we may, I don't think that. Last lap, last very slow lap. Here we go, it's gonna be the hill that's gonna get us in trouble, Toby. Um, no, we're not going to make it, mate. Go, go, go. All right, we're going to have to do another lap and a half. All right, never work with animals or remote control things. All right, it's so settled in. All right, ladies, just, just, just take a breather. We're having a pit lap. All right? It's a pit stop. Just relax. All right, now I've got to dance, Toby. Two. Yes. On the fourth and final lap, if you've got a chicken, cheer! Oh, 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 the get out of the way, stop playing chicken! Here we go, here we go! You other girls, get away from the finish line! I don't know! It was a tie! Another lap! Alright, we need an outright winner! Come on, girls! Come on, here we go, here we go! That looks a bit easier, here we go! Alright, sprint, sprint! Oh, yeah. <laughs> so well done, honey. Who are we bid for? The blue one. Uh, if you want a photo with the chicken, how many chicken, laps did the come blue down one do? Zero. <laughs> so yeah, we clearly <laughs> lost. But we haven't really because we got heaps of frothies <laughs> and we got. <laughs> yeah. And we got a nice dinner. And it's going to be chicken, roast chicken. It's going to be blue roast. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be chicken, roast chicken. It's going to be blue roast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No worries at all. Oh. There you go. Meet her. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> the ants must go to bed. <laughs> Maybe they do go to bed. There's no ants, babe. I don't know. Have you climbed under the van and actually looked? Mm, I would oh, look on the ground. There's Moss though. Alright, ready? In. So we've seen what we can see in Tambo. Two things we missed out on. Um, Zach's bearded dragon. Uh, he wasn't at the races, the chicken races last night. It's a kid and he's got a couple of bearded dragons. And the other thing we missed out on was Pontius because well, we couldn't find it. So now we're going to head on to Lara Wetlands. Yep, Lara Wetlands. We'll see if we, we'll camp there for a night or two or three. Oh, that wool scale is supposed to be the same. Give it information, that's where you should go. So 
So we're just driving through Blackall. Blackall. And we think we might actually stop here for the night because there's well, a lot. The wall scale is supposed to be insane. Yeah, there's a, a lot to, to see here and it would be nice to to do it and then stay rather than do it and then rush off. Yeah. So maybe maybe not in Blackall. Says, Welcome to Blackall. Rules for camping. There are rules. Rules. Rules, rules, rules. Prior to setting up your camp, you are required to register and pay your camp fees at Blackhall Visitor Information Centre. Between 9am and 5pm. There you go. Hold your first stop was the Visitor Information Centre. <gasps> Decided that this is where we are stopping. It's a lovely big campground. We have a map of the local area. It's all about the Baku River. Welcome to Blackhall. So that's where we're headed now. We have to get a rig along to get to that one o'clock tour and everything else we'll hopefully see soon. Oh, it's just pulled up. Center. So here in Blackhall at the Visitor Information Centre with Amanda, yes. who's got some brochures and a little bit of information about what we should see and do while we're here. Absolutely. So thank you very much for stopping. Firstly, we appreciate all visitors into town. So um, basically, if you come to Blackhall, some of the things to see and do is definitely the wall scale. It's the last fully intact wall washing plant left in Australia. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, something else that is definitely worth stopping to have a bit of a look at is our rampart. We have a gentleman up there that does a tour at 10 o'clock every day. And we've also got housed in the Navina homestead, the original transit that was used on the stump to survey Queensland as well. <laughs> we also have the Jack Howe Gallery, which is um, talks about our legendary shearer. He was well known for shearing a shearing record of 321 sheep in seven hours and 40 minutes with played shears. To date, that record has never been beat. <laughs> so that's pretty what phenomenal. What a champion. <laughs> we also have our aquatic centre, which is open from 9 till 5. So if you want to have a nice thermal Was that dip. that the heated pool? That's oh, exactly I saw that right. on the sign coming in. Yeah, so it's open from 9 till 5 in tourist season and 10 till 5 on the weekends at $2 a dollar or concession. And they do actually have a newly um, constructed 20 seat as far as well. So you don't Ooh. have to fight each other to get in, which is really cool. <laughs> that sounds nice. Um, something else we have newly opened is our Bushman's Artisan Gallery, which is quite cool. So um, the building itself is actually made of handmade bricks, which is really unique. Wow. Um, I guess, yeah, that's sort of... Cool. That is plenty. We've got a bit to do then. We're only here for one night, <laughs> so my goodness, I think the first will be the tour at one o'clock. Yes, so just be out there 15 minutes before the hour that so you wish to go on the we tour. We will be getting a wriggle on right now. Yes, thank you so much no for worries. all of your help. which is just outside Blackhall. I've booked us in for the one o'clock tour, which starts in about, I don't know, seven, Good work, seven minutes. Yeah. So we'll I take know. you on a little bit of a tour, I think. Well, they'll take us on a bit of a tour. Yeah, but we're going to take them on a tour. Maybe a little bit, because it goes for about an hour. So we won't show you the whole thing, um, but it, it looks really lovely. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. Look at the little fountain in the background already. Yeah. Is it a fountain? Pump? I don't know thing? what it is. Whatever it is. Whatever but it, it is. looks pretty. It's water that comes out of a pipe. I'm sure they'll tell us on the tour. Yeah, that's right. All right. See ya. Well, here we are then. Now it's time to join us on a journey as we investigate the facts, figures and faces that help make up the Australian wool industry. And what we know as golden age of wool. The golden age of wool was an era when Australia rode on the sheep's back. Exports and wool prices were high, pastoralists prospered, and the economy of the nation enjoyed a sustained period of health.
interesting. A bit of a glimpse into the past and I think, not sure how much of the video, we filmed a lot of it, not sure how much we're going to put in, yeah. but like he was saying, um, or on the video they were saying, this is one of the few tourist attractions that is, it was already here and they've just, yeah. Not renovated, but... Well, it's reborn. They just recreated the whole yeah. thing, yeah. So you get to experience what it was actually like. The machines are working and... Yeah, I don't and this know. is the only one that's left in Australia. It's the only one in Australia left like it, so... Were there over 50 of them or something? 51, 52 yeah. or something like that. But yeah, this is the last one and it's... I don't know. Hats off to everyone here that's... Yeah. Brought it back to life. It's yeah. amazing. It's beautiful. Five thirty-four p.m. Can anyone guess what's going on outside? You look quite comfortable there. Yeah, I'm comfy. Comfy. Come I'm going to come and sit down. Bye. We are heading off so to check out Ram Park, uh, as you can see there. We are already hooked up because after this we're heading to I think Lara Wetlands. Do you guys want some breggy? Yeah. Breggy. Breggy. Breggy wrap or something. Ham and cheese toasties. We do. <laughs> yes! I'll have 40 of them, please. No, anyone Sounds good. Mm, ham, cheese, tomato, toasty. Check that thing out. You happy now? This is better than the other one at Chinchilla. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's hard to get a good coffee, but this joint, it's actually mint. Black or what's it called? The drawing board. The drawing board. Welcome to Red Ridge. Thank you. We're a non-for-profit company enriching the lives of um, all that live out in central and western Queensland. We take care of arts and culture projects and um, showcase all the talents that we have out in this area. There's some amazing things in here. So amazing. Um, everything's handmade. Well, I don't imagine this could be made by a machine. <laughs> What's that magpie? A representation of the Outback's vibrant bird life. We had a, a project a couple of years ago. Communities got together and created 30 garments for mental health, all out of recyclable items. Yeah. Is that, is that what's so, on yep. display? And here? it was called Dress the Central West. So if you hop on um, YouTube or anything and Google Dress the Central West or Google Red Ridge, you'll see all the amazing work that we do throughout Western Queensland. We have The Lost Art, it's a project that we run. It began by one of our older gentlemen in, in the community saying like, leather craft is a lost art, so we need to make sure it's remembered and taught. Yeah. So it's a place that opens just up the road in the main street of Blackhall, um, four days a week, where community members can go, either if they're job seekers, um, disabled, just wanting to reconnect with um, yeah. the community and feel a purpose and yeah, learn learn the art of leather craft and create um, amazing masterpieces and whatever it sells, it goes back into the project to keep it going and it's a great, it's great for the community and yeah. So what do you do in here? We do a bit of everything, a bit of leather, a bit of woodwork, um, yeah, whatever, welding. And who is we? Uh, Rescue Plus. Rescue Plus? Who are you rescuing? Everyone, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all the guys that work for the dog. Oh, perfect. So we um, come in and give them a few skills. and Make lots of great things. Where are we and what are we doing now? Uh, homestead. 
Ram Park. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. There's a tour happening. Yeah, Isn't I think there's some old bloke coming to talk about the old drovers and stuff. How you going, mate? I'll uh, I'll open all them up for you. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, awesome. In a minute, and I'll kick, kick them over. Yeah, awesome. Sounds you'll, good. You'll stop for a while for the tour, won't you? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Yep. And uh, I, I've shame. I haven't been in Rocky Sea and uh, with my legs and that, and only got home yesterday. I'd had the mule and the bloody horses. <laughs> Unless you want to crack the whip while you're mucking around, do you with them? Oh, yeah, go on. What Give about you? Crack. I'll crack the whip. Yeah, of course you would, on you? you? Yeah, she does every day with me. And then when you get used to it, I'll give you two of them to crack. Uh, oh, righty -o. All right, do, do I stand back I'm now? I'm try and move into the middle of nowhere. Yep. Back now, mate. Oh, I'm standing well back, buddy. Uh, Just put it out there. Uh, no need to run away. <laughs> I was going to get you to bend over and I was going to pin a bit of paper on your tail and crack it off for you. See? That's all you got to do. That's all don't, you don't do. grab it like that. Okay. Just let it be and just throw it out in front of you. Take it right back. Take it forward. Bring it back through itself. Okay. Now bend over now. <laughs> <laughs> you made that look very easy. Yeah. Okay. No, it's it's not easy, but don't worry about it. Oh. Go further up. Hey! Here we go. I'm gonna get myself. <laughs> I am getting myself. Oh. Never learnt to read or write, so you can imagine what sort of work I'd done. But that wasn't anyone's fault, that was mine. Yep. And uh, what I'm going to do today, I got interested in this tourism back in 1990. Uh, I uh, cleaned that river out where you camped down there. Council gave me the job after the big flood and I cleaned that. And when I first started there with it, It'd be about three caravans a week coming through and pull up down there and that and uh, got talking to them and uh, all that sort of jazz and got really interested in tourism. Then I started breaking in a few horses again and doing some stockman challenges and I used to ride past them and talk to them every afternoon and finish up with some really good mates out of it, eh? Yeah, but what I'm going to do today for a long time when I did go away anywhere, not that I went away much, I'd go to these museums because I couldn't read and write. You'd see this stuff laying on the ground and you didn't know what it was. And I said, if I ever get the job where I can get things going, I'm going to try and get a working museum going. And that's what I'm trying to do. It's, uh, I've only been here since 2000 uh, doing these tours. 2016, I know you might think it's a long time, but uh, when you're up here on your own and you're trying to get all this stuff running and, and building it up, uh, it, time gets by, eh? But that's what I'll try and do today for you, is I'll try and get a bit of stuff running and, and uh, share a bit of my drove and, and that experience, eh? 1994, stop running, eh? This one it used to run from Jericho down to Yarrika, the end of the line, eh? And uh, it would have people bucked off horse or women having babies, eh? They'd uh, be in there, but the women didn't know what was the hardest, laying on that bed there without a mattress or having the child, see? And you still got all the bells and whistles too, see? <laughs> so if you cut yourself short going around there, just slip back here, eh? Yep. I'll just see if it'll kick over for you. To give you. A lot of people like to hear them running. 
And that's what my aim is, to get all these things running. Yep, it hadn't been running since about 92 until uh, early this year when I got it going, yeah. I'm not a mechanic, I'm a horseman. You can tell. <laughs> There we go, it's on now. A little motor down the side there, the you folks run up a look at the motor there. It's down along there, it's a Hillman, Hillman motor, eh? Come on dear, get off your rum and sass, get over here. <laughs> Sitting around over there. We want to keep an eye on you, you look a bit KG. <laughs> eh? A bit cun on. Eh? <laughs> Yep. Hey folks, all this percussion stuff, I don't know much about it. When I was young, I used to sit down in the tree guards down there and these old bucks, I don't know if they were telling me liars or what, but anyway, I believed them. This pump jack here, over 90 years of age, come from Tilbury Station. Tilbury Station was owned by the Riches out there, old B. Rich and then Fred took over and that and uh, Barry Rich and Harvey and the girls, he had three daughters, I just forget their names. Who's going to work this one for me? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. You're a good girl, yeah. Hard to find good girls now, just wait over there. Don't be too keen. <laughs> this one here, years ago they tell me, when they put that telephone line across the top end there, they used a few of these. They're not a bore pump, folks, they're only well. Who's going to work number seven? Come on, little one, you can do it. You all hold your wallet, it's probably full of money. <laughs> you look very prosperous to me. I'll get the heart <laughs> That motel up there is where the gate was. That, if you've been up that way, the motel up there, that's where the main showground's gate. They're having a show here one day, and this big bullock got out. And he had horns on him like slip rails. Down through all the tents he come through, the knock em downs and that. And when he got down near the gate there, and come out of all the tents, Bless me if he didn't have a little monkey on his horns. And the little monkey was playing home sweet home on a violin. So they tell me. It was always a dream of mine from when I was a kid that I'd build a wall for the drovers. The only black old drovers on there and that because if you'd a, because it was our birthday, our hundred and fiftieth. And if you'd have built a wall with all the drovers on, you'd have wanted the bar to be from here to Brisbane. If you're going to get a bell, have a look in there on the tongue, and you'll see the maker's name. See? This is a different one. See? Then, this is our, our Cobb and Co. bells, horse team bells, these. They're Cobb and Co. See? These here, they're New York bells. We won't worry about them. We'll go out here and get a bit more of Fraliano. There's only one lady ever, I said, what's that? And this lady walked straight out and said, bang. Because she worked in a printing office. Oh, Yep. What do you reckon it might be? The book stapler. What do you reckon this might be? The gas maker. Carbide down here. Water here. And it would just drip onto your carbide. This carbide makes acetylene, see? And there's your things for filling your lights and that up, eh? 
It's got 4,000 miles on it. Come on in, folks. Have a look inside here. If because I don't know how to, you know, idle them up, eh, or that. But uh, the buggers are hard to get to come around and do anything. In there? Yeah, you can get up in there if you want. It's nearly bigger than my shed, mate. Yeah. See, they see you. They see you. Yeah. you got to hold that forward. See? That... I don't know nothing about them. I'm not trying to big note myself. I'm a horseman. But you got to hold that thing forward, see? That lever. Yeah. Oh, no. You're about in flattery. No, it, it was going this morning. I had it going. <laughs> oh, no. No. I'm not backwards. today. Yep, right. -o. Jump out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. What make is this one? It's a it's one Chevy as well. Been for three cuts on a sheep behind, one up that side, one over the tail, and one up that side. It's better than maggots getting into his behind and coming out his ears. And that's all you had to do to block the blowfly, eh? It's three cuts, eh, and they're over it in 12 days. Yep. You watch the way that this thing goes. See how it's set up? You pick your little lamb up, put him in there. He wasn't driving his horns into there on you and carrying on, eh? But you just pick him up and put him in there and really good, eh? Yep. That come from out at Norwood. Uh, Stuart uh, Ross. No, Stuart Taylor, give me that. You have to put this under a tree and big Frank Banner would shear 250 sheep a day with it. Probably won't go now either now that Blitz wouldn't go. <laughs> That's just your hand piece and that there, folks. For you people who've never seen one, that's just a hand piece, see? Yep, and that. But uh, here in August, you'll see all that stuff here on the 20th of August. There's rope makers, uh, whip makers, and that. They cut the green eyed ropes out for Bronco and a nut here. I'll have a blacksmith over there and a wheelwright man making them wooden wheels. He'll be doing it over there too. Yep. In the old post office. Yeah. And it's in the post office there. Uh, I took my wife there on Mother's Day. I've never took her out since we've been married. 53 years until the other day. And I thought it was quite nice. I don't go out, see? Uh, and thanks again for coming, eh? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.